very important and one must realize. So the clinical details may needed are age. Not only age, we want to know how many days, months or years the baby is. <coughs> is there any hepatosplenomegaly jaundice lymph nodes, fever or any other significant clinical finding? We know there can be two classifications of anemias can be etiologic or can be morphologic. Coming to the etiologic classification, it is basically either decreased red cell production, increased destruction, the decreased production can be due to either deficiency of some of the factors or it may be replaced marrow, decreased production or it may not be functioning, a hyper functioning marrow. Increased red cell destruction is usually taken as hemolysis, which may be intrinsic hemolytic anemias, which is a whole list of tests, or it may be extrinsic hemolytic anemias, which are again a large number, which are there in your books. But when you are looking at a case, you cannot rule out or approach a patient from that textbook classification. So what is the way of approaching is morphology. How do we approach? We approach a morphologic classification which can be microcytic smaller cells, normocytic normal cells or maybe larger than normal microcytic cells. How do we classify these? We know that normal red cells are 7 microns, 7.2 microns. They are beautifully nice round cells with a central pattern due to biconcave disc and that is what is a normal blood picture like. Now that picture is there because it is made from a fresh blood. Look what we do to this nice cell if we make an anticoagulated smear. What a, we are wrecking the whole blood system. Look what happens to neutrophils. Next. Two lymphocytes or monocytes. I don't know what this is. You have caused petaling here. Next. Acanthocytosis, pycnocytosis, or is it created by acid in the laboratory? So this is what we are trying to damage these cells whenever we are making smears from the anticoagulant drug. Now, in 1935, Dr. Ventro reported the use of RBC indexes. Now earlier, as I said, morphologic classification, micro, normo, or macrocytic by looking at the smear. He said, to remove the subjectivity from individual people, let us put some data into use. And he was the first one in 1935 to propose the use of RBC indices, MCB, H, and MCHC, to reduce or eliminate the subjectivity of the blood smear review at the differentiation of anemias at laboratory level. So we have these morphologic classifications and which is due to a number of reasons which we are all aware of. Microcytic hypochromic can be due to, next please, microcytic iron deficiency is the commonest reason, maybe due to any one of these reasons which we are very, very familiar with or it may be due to, <coughs> next one, with a not iron deficiency but yet microcytic and that is usually chronic disorders. That traits are very common, one must look for them, and of course some rarer types of microcytic anemia. That is the flow chart, how to approach a patient of microcytic hypochromic anemia. Your calculation from your RBC count, your PCV, what Dr. Bintrou proposed is done, and then you look at the slide to confirm, yes, they are microcytes. The next step is to do serum iron TIDC. If serum iron is high, you are, look for, you are looking at something like a marrow iron which may be high and it is citroblastic anemia. On the other hand, if serum iron is normal or it is low, if it is low, do ferritin. Confirm that it is due to iron deficiency. But if ferritin is normal or high, you are looking at anemia of chronic disorder. On the other hand, 
if the serum iron is normal or little high and you suspect hemoglobinopathies, please go and do the